So you want to buy an e-bike, but you just don't know where to start. There's just so much information out there and you don't know what's a sponsored ad or what's relevant to what you need. Well, you definitely came to the right place because I'm not being sponsored to tell you any of this information. I just asked my large network of bike commuting friends from all over the world what it is that you should be looking for when buying an e-bike. Then I compiled this list and did all the research for you. We all like lists, right? So we're going to do Patty's top 12 things to think about when buying an e-bike. You ready? Let's go. Here's number one, safety certification. This suggestion came from a few folks. What even is UL certification? UL requires an electric bike's drivetrain battery and charger system to undergo rigorous testing to ensure it meets the standards. While a quick method to check for UL certification is to look for the UL logo on the bike and or battery, it is ultimately best to check public listings for UL certifications. So as soon as I saw this, I went, uh-oh, I don't see this on my Rad Power Bike battery. Should I be worried? Turns out, no, there are more than one type of safety certifications. Here's what I found on the Rad Power Bikes website. Rad Power Bikes are certified under the European standard EN15194. I'm not gonna bore you with the details of what that means here, but I've put a link in the description so you can read up on it if you're interested. But the most important thing to learn here is that you need to make sure that your bike has some kind of safety certification that is legitimate. Because sometimes a cheap bike might be just a fire hazard. So make sure you do a little digging and find out. Number two, make sure your local bike shop can service your e-bike. Okay, so maybe you're handy and you can do your own maintenance, thank you very much. Truth is, e-bikes are just a little bit more complicated and they have motors attached to computers. And after all that investment, do you really just want to trust yourself with the repairs? As for me, my local bike shop didn't sell the bike I wanted, but I still wanted to make sure that they could service it if I had any issues. Chances are you have some shops around your neighborhood too, but they may not service an e-bike that was not purchased through them. And if you can't find anyone in your town to do it, it may not be worth the money that you're saving by buying it online. Number three, mid-drive pedal assist versus rear hub with throttle. On a mid-drive e-bike, the motor is located at the center of the e-bike between the pedals at the bike's bottom bracket. The motor essentially makes it easier for you to pedal by providing some pedaling force to the cranks for you. This is called pedal assist. Most mid-drive e-bikes only offer pedal assist. They do not have a throttle. This means you have to pedal in order for the motor to supply power for the most part. The harder you pedal, the more power the motor will give you. Everyone who's really into e-bikes will tell you that this is the preferred motor for e-bikes. One key reason why that is, is that the mid-drive motor drives the crank instead of the wheel itself, multiplying its power and allowing it to take better advantage of the bike's existing gears. They're also less taxing on the battery for the simple reason that it's located in the middle of the bike, so the power distribution is evened out. So if money is no object, and you have a long commute or you'll be traveling longer distance in between charges, then you might really want to consider a mid-drive motor. We can talk about this one subject on another video, but for now let's just move on to the next type of motor, which is a rear hub with throttle. My bike has a throttle and it's also a rear hub motor type e-bike. Some people don't like the throttle because they're worried that they'll engage it and it will get stuck and they'll get into an accident. I personally really like my throttle. I'm actually still learning how to balance using the throttle and the gears and I'm gonna make a video about this learning process so just make sure to check back in here. Anywho, can we get back to the motor? Okay. So the way this works is the hub motor directly powers the wheel it's built into. In other words, it applies torque directly to the wheel. It operates completely separately from the bike's drivetrain. Most 
Hub Motor e-bikes come with a cadence sensor-based pedal assist system. The cadence sensor measures if you're pedaling. When you start pedaling, the sensor sends a signal to the bike's control unit. The control unit then turns the hub motor on. When you stop pedaling, the sensor signals the control unit and the motor shuts off. Honestly, we really could do a whole video on this point alone, like I said, but I posted a link to an awesome website that has a lot of pros and cons. It's all in the description, so make sure to click it if you're really interested in digging into this point. Number four, weight. My friend Andrew reminded me to watch for the weight of the e-bike because they're heavier than regular bikes and if you're going to have to carry it anywhere, then you really need to pay attention to how much it weighs. Our bikes are super heavy. I'm talking almost 30 kilos or 67 and a half pounds, but they fold so they tuck nicely by the entrance and though we have a small place, we're able to keep it inside. So make sure to check out the specs if you're buying online or just lift it if you're at the store. The battery will actually be one of the heaviest components as well. So maybe just removing the battery makes a big difference when you're carrying it. Which brings us to our next point, which is number five, size. Just like any other bike, but sometimes we get caught up on the features of an e-bike and you forget to check if it's the right size for you or things like height and capacity. This is especially true if you buy it online and you get excited about how the bike looks and all the bells and whistles and you forget to check for things like size. My bike is on the threshold of being almost too small for me. I have long legs or long inseam and I prefer taller bikes. I would say that if you're taller than 5'9", this bike just isn't for you. Also, check on weight bearing. You're now relying not just on human power, but also a motor to power your bike. So you should make sure it can handle your weight and height. This is true for all bikes, but even more so with e-bikes. The motor has to be strong enough to bear the weight of everything on the bike, plus you. Number six, brakes. Brakes are not what they used to be when I grew up, right? That's for sure. There's mechanical disc brakes and hydraulic disc brakes. Listen, you can go 10 rounds on what's best for this or that kind of weather, or whether you want to maintain your brakes yourself or not, hint, I trust my bike brakes to my local mechanic, thank you very much. But the most important feature in any e-bike system is the kill switch. This is a feature that basically senses if you touch the brakes and it automatically kills the motor so that you can start slowing down. And then you apply more pressure to the brakes and it really stops you. This is especially important because sometimes you may accidentally hit the throttle at the same time as the brakes and this will deactivate the throttle and keep you safe. This is why some people are scared of the throttle and I really don't blame them. My Twitter friend, Kate, was telling me that one time on a very snowy day, on the first time that she was trying her new e-bike, she rode all the way to work with her kill switch activated because her brakes were slightly pressed. And she was wondering why the pedal assist just wasn't working. It's kind of funny now, I'm sure, but it sounds like something I would do. And at the same time, during a snowstorm just cannot be fun. If money is no object, then hydraulic disc brakes will have the most stopping power in any situation, in any weather condition. And they are actually standard equipment on most e-bikes because of the added weight and speed of an electric bike but apparently they freeze up in temperatures colder than minus 20 Celsius. And to be honest, so does everything. I've been riding in lower temps than that and really you need to just slow down and be super careful in general when it's that cold. Hey, if you made it this far in the video, I have a little bonus for you. I have a little PDF file that I created with this checklist that you can download to take with you if you're shopping in your local neighborhood or to just keep handy if you're looking online. And remember, if you're finding this channel useful at all and you want to see more of this content, please consider 
subscribing, liking, and hey, maybe even ring the bell if you want to see more videos. Number seven, lights. Even if you're not planning on riding at night at all, lights are merely a matter of safety. It's as much to be seen as to see where you're going. As it is, cars have a hard time seeing us, so we need as much help as we can get. In the Netherlands, all bikes must have lights at the risk of getting fined. I have my lights on all the time, day and night, because I use my bike as my vehicle to get to work and many other places really during the week. And in Winnipeg, some of our bike lanes only offer paint as protection. Number eight, parts and accessories compatibility. This is especially important if you have another bike and you have some accessories that you'd like to use like racks and bags. In my case, I bought these nice bike bags and I use them a lot. And I use them a lot in my old bike, but when I got my new e-bike, they didn't fit. They just didn't fit on the rack that came with it. And the old rack from the old bike didn't fit on the new bike, so I had to spend about $67 to buy these adapters to make it work. Again, this is only relevant if you have some accessories that you'd like to interchange. A lot of e-bikes come with a lot of accessories, so just make sure that you keep that in mind when you're buying your bike. Also keep in mind that you might love your e-bike so much that you might wanna use it a little more, maybe to do a little grocery run or any other errand that's a quick errand around town. So you might want to consider what else you want to add to your bike. My bike came with the racks and the lights and there's some baskets I can add as well, which I might. Number nine, motor noise. When I first started researching e-bikes, I thought this would be such a big deal to me. I thought I would hate the hum of the motor and it would drive me nuts. But when I looked at the price tag and considered that this one purchase was gonna be just my first e-bike, then I didn't put that much weight on that decision. I really kind of like the sound of it now, it doesn't bother me at all, but hey, add it to the list. Number 10, removable battery. Think about whether you have to charge your e-bike at work sometimes, and if you do, is there a plug nearby? Are you able to plug it in where it's parked, or will you have to remove the battery and take it with you? Also think about at home, are you able to charge it where you park it or do you have to remove it to charge? These are just small things, but make sure you consider it because you don't want to find out too late. Number 11, tires. This was a point that my Twitter friend Kate brought up. Yes, the same Kate with the kill switch and I think it's brilliant. You need to consider if you're going to be using your bike in the winter and if you'd like to get studded tires. You want to find out if these tires that are on your bike come as studded tires right off the shelf. And this is not if you just need studded tires, but also if you want some flexibility. I did not consider this, and now I have this odd size that I can't get studded tires for. They're a fat tire, but they are small, 20 by four inches. I am considering studying my own for next winter. So if you have done that yourself and you have some tips, make sure you leave me a comment. I know my friend Andrew has done it and I'm pretty sure he's on board with helping me do it. My workaround right now is that luckily my fat tires are pretty knobby, so letting the air out helps out a lot. But I have wiped out on the ice. In fact, I did it on my birthday and it was very dramatic. There was a lot of people around, but I was going slow, so I didn't hurt myself. I was wearing my helmet. Regardless, it was not a great experience. Final point, number 12, the purpose. Most bikes in North America are what we call either a mountain bike or road bike. The city cruiser makes an appearance here and there, but it doesn't really dominate the market. If your reason for e-biking is to ride the monkey trails or speed race, then by all means do so. But if you're going to use your bike for leisure or to commute to work back and forth, or just a ride around town on the weekend, then I really suggest you consider an upright cruiser or an Omafeets that allows for comfortable riding. Here's how I ended up choosing my bike. I needed a foldable bike because of space constraints. I wanted a more upright style of seating due to the long rides of my work commute. 
And the fat tires are actually the thing I didn't know that I wanted. But I'm end up but I'm actually enjoying it quite a bit riding it in the winter. And I'm looking forward to seeing what it's gonna be like in the summer. So make sure to check back to see that. One of the things that one of my tweets said was to make sure you get some warm clothes because you're gonna love your e-bike so much, you're gonna wanna ride it all the time. And I couldn't agree more. Here I am, a Brazilian living in Winnipeg, riding in the winter in minus 30. Before I got my e-bike, I never thought that would be a possibility. Thank you so much if you watched this video all the way to the end. I hope to see you here again and feel free to leave me a comment if you think that there's something I missed and that I should cover in another video. Thanks again. And all the bells and whistles and you check, damn it. This is special, too fast.